All right. Okay, no problem. We're all doing good here. All right, so I want to, I, I hung this thing up. I want to show us something, so a few things about flying. Has anybody ever been flying before? I may have, who has ever flown a paper airplane before? Anybody ever flown a paper airplane before? How, who has ever uh, flown a kite before? Done a kite? Okay. Now, what both of those things that, that we call flying something, do, you, do your feet ever leave the ground? No. No, they don't. So for real flying, you got to get off the ground. All right. How many of you guys have ever flown in a, uh, a big airliner? Like a big airliner where there's hundreds of seats. All right. Nobody's, nobody else done that. How many of you have jumped off of something really, really tall? <laughs> how many of you landed the way you wanted to land? I can't. Yeah, how many of you flapped your arms? All right. Well, the kind of flying, the first kind of flying that I ever did was in a really, really small airplane. All right. And I'm talking small like if we took this seat here. Here, you have, hold that. And we took this seat here. And you, this picture right here, you think that this is like a shrunken picture of what a cockpit is. Actually, that's about how wide the cockpit was. I'm almost sitting inside of my picture, aren't I? And so I was right here. My instructor sat right there. I was a little bit smaller back then. But uh, I, had to, I was so short, though, I had to sit. I had two pads to sit on so I could see over the, the dash. And, uh, and I had to scoot the thing as far forward as it would go so that my feet would even touch the pedals. Because in an airplane, you've got uh, the yoke. That's this thing here, and it's a, it's a controls. You only usually use one hand. That's why I always drive with one hand, because you only ever had one hand on this. Then the other hand, you would have down here on these things. This is what, where controls for how fast or, or how much power you got. So you would always rest your hand here. And then you use this hand to adjust the radios, or your, uh, or your uh, navigation devices. So you would always use this hand here. And then this hand here was always on the yoke. You never took this hand off the yoke because it had a very, very important job. And actually, that job is shown in here, but it is so small. It's actually the smallest thing in this cockpit is the most important. And I, I want to talk to you about the most important thing, uh, that the most important tool I had while I was a pilot. Okay. And, uh, but I want to show you, first of all, some of these other tools that are in here. So uh, first off, we need to get us a Bible verse going, all right? And uh, so let's, do a, let's get a Bible verse. And you know there's lots of Bible verses about, about flying. And uh, we'll go to the one, a real popular one, all right? And so here we go. Are you ready? It's going to be Romans. It's not Romans. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Say it again. Isaiah 40, 31. Wait, wait. Ready? Go. All right. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All right. So there's a verse about flying. You ready for another verse about flying? Okay. All right. Now, uh, when the Wright brothers figured out how to make a wing that they could fly on, they studied the birds that God had made. And so uh, when the shape that they came out with, people thought was ridiculous. They thought it wouldn't work. People had their own ideas. And, uh, but they studied what God made. And uh, lo and behold, it worked. So we're going to go now. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 48. Go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 48. Go. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. All right. There's a lot of verses in 1 Corinthians 15 that are about... Uh, that are about the resurrection and about when Jesus is going to take us up to heaven. And he said, the things that are on the earth, that come from the earth, stay on the earth. But the things that, that come from heaven, they go back to heaven where they came from. 
All right. You, you were born on the earth, right? At least we think so. Jamarcus, are you an earthling? Jamarcus is an earthling. His body was born on the earth. But if Jamarcus chooses to trust Jesus Christ as his Savior, God gives him a new man, a new spirit inside of him that is not from the earth. All right? It wasn't born here. When you get saved, it's called being born again. Something gets in, God gives you something inside of you that is not from the earth. And what's on the earth stays in the earth. He heard the old saying, what goes up must come. Yeah. All right. But what comes from above will go right back to where God made it. And there's something inside of you that God made. And it is not going to be bound by sin. And it won't be bound by this earth. It's going to fly one day. Now, the kind of flying that we did here, we'll have a couple more, a couple more verses but uh, the kind of the Bible does talk about flying is what I want to want to is what I wanted to show you, and there's uh, there's places where it talks about uh, even fancy fanciful creatures that have wings of a stork that fly around. It has things that where it talks about a creature that has six wings that that covers his face with two and covers his feet and with and two that he flies with. It has the face of an ox and the face of an eagle. There's all kinds of things in the Bible. There's even a guy. Uh, that uh, came to Samson's parents, and he was like a rocket ship. Because when they kindled the fire on the altar, the Bible says that he ascended up into heaven in the fire on the altar. Now, my imagination has it looking way cooler than what I just said, all right? Because I figure he's like standing on by the altar, and as soon as they put the sacrifice there, it's like a rocket begins to take off, and smoke starts to billow out from under his feet. And, and I mean, the ground starts to rumble, and this guy shoots up through the sky like he's a, a NASA space shuttle. And it could have happened that way. One more verse. Let me just show you, if, if we're going to fly, we're going to have to learn to fly from somebody, all right? Uh, you, uh, you guys, uh, who are the two guys that discovered the way of flying that we do now? What were their names? Right. The Wright brothers. Do you know their first names? Who knows their first names? Guess? Any guesses? No. N no. <laughs> These are really just guesses, aren't they? Orville and Wilbur Wright. They were their names. All right. Yeah, just like in Garfield, Orville and Wilbur Wright. Those two guys uh, were the first two that discovered how we fly now. They, they got the mechanics together, and that's how they did it. Okay, now wait a minute. Did you know that in order for somebody else to learn how to fly, those two guys taught everybody that knew how to fly their airplanes. They're the first two. They taught everybody that knew how to fly their airplanes at that time. Okay, does that make sense? If you were going to learn how to fly, you had to learn from Orville or Wilbur Wright. Okay, got that? Then they taught those guys, and then those guys taught other people. All right? And, and nobody just learned how to fly by not getting taught, by, except by those two guys. But if you're going to learn how to fly, and uh, we're going to fly spiritually. Every one of you is going to fly spiritually one day. Uh, and I mean spiritually like if you're saved, you're going to fly, and if you're not saved, you're not. But uh, flying is also going to be a picture today of navigating your life okay because just like flying you've never done it before you have flying a kite you've flown a paper airplane but you've never been in you've never your feet have never left the ground unless you jumped off of something really tall right so if you're gonna do it somebody's gonna have to show you how right okay Jamarcus has never lived his life before so if he's gonna do it somebody's got to show him how right okay so ready one more Bible drill if you've won a Bible drill, then you, then you wait. You don't win this one. You look it up that you don't win this one. Everybody else, Bible's over the head. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. All right, wait a minute. Let's, let's think about this. What does it say? It says that when he had spoken, who's he? Who's he? Who's talking? When he had spoken, Jesus, all right? When Jesus had spoken these things, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they, let's read on, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. 
We're not going to turn there, but in a very important passage, Jesus said, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. My point here, though, with these is to just tell you that if we're going to learn how to live, we're going to have to learn from somebody that's done it. Okay? Right now, I am the oldest person in this room. Okay? And I, but, you know, I can only teach you what I know at 33 years of age. I haven't lived to 34. I haven't lived to 35. I don't know what life is like at 40. I don't know what to tell you what to expect when you're 60. I can only tell you what to do up to 33 years old. All right? You only know up to 10 years old, right? That's, that's it. You only know up to 10 years old because you haven't lived any more than that. I want to go to somebody that has lived forever, and he knows life from the beginning to the end, and I want to look at him as our example, okay? So we're going to go in here, and, and in your life you're going to have a cockpit. It's going to have lots and lots of tools of, and things that you're going to, going to need to use. This is the yoke. This is the control thing. And, and this, has got, this is very important. Although under here, what you can't see, there's two pedals down here. And uh, can somebody tell me what the two pedals might be for that are, that are down here that you can't see? All right. Well, in a car, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's tell you what it's not. In a car, you have one pedal and it makes you go faster. It's the gas pedal. And one pedal stops you and that's the brake. In an airplane, you don't actually steer with this. You steer with this. You steer with your feet. You push on right, and it makes your rudder turn this way, and it makes you turn to the right. And if you push the left one, it makes your rudder turn to the other way, and it makes you turn to this way. The yoke, yep, it pulls back, and it pushes in. It'll make you go up. All right? That's called uh, pitch. And then it also will will turn this way, and that's called roll. The pedals control the axis called yaw. All right? There will be a quiz on this later. So there's three things. It's not just turning left and turning right and following the road. You have to remember you're going up and down, and you have to keep it straight this way, and you have to keep it straight this way. And so those, those things there are important for steering. But flying is, is not just about getting off the ground. You, gotta, you, gotta, you wanna go somewhere, right? Um, so here's some things. This one right here, this first one on this end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put them, the first one on this row is right here. And it says on it, air speed. Air speed. What do you think, what do you think this thing it measures? Okay. <laughs> How fast the air, you're moving through the air. How fast you're moving through the air, all right. How fast the air is like That's right, okay. That's very good because if you've ever stood outside when it's really windy, you can stand and the wind can be hitting you really hard and are you moving? You don't have to be moving for the wind to hit you. So this thing is, is an instrument and you have to use other instruments to check it because if the wind's blowing really hard, it's gonna say you're going 120 miles an hour when in reality, you're only going 50. I would got to fly one time, we were flying just over here, just over the interstate, just over Walmart. And we turned in the wind. It was really, really strong winds. And as we were flying, I looked down, and we were going backwards. All right? We were not going forward. We were going backwards. That's how. And, and we pretty much ended the flight that day, because if you can't even make headway against wind, you probably better land. It's too much. And so the, this measures. This is the, the airspeed indicator. All right? They all have special names. The airspeed indicator. All right. Now there's the, you have the, the, it tells you the IAS, the indicated airspeed. You also have one that's the CAS, the calibrated airspeed. And then you have the, the ground, air, ground speed. All right. So you have three different kinds of speeds, indicated, calibrated, and ground speed. There will be a test later. Okay. So, and we have this other thing here. Can you see this little one right here? It's got like a miniature airplane with wings and it's got a section that's brown on the bottom and a section that's blue on the top. All right. What do you think? What do you think that thing does for you? What do you think that thing does for you? Well, no, that's that's a different one. This one all. Okay, it kind of shows how balanced you are. Does that a little bit? This one, this is called your attitude indicator. Okay. <laughs> do we need an attitude indicator here? <laughs> for me. Attitude indicator. This, whenever you turn and, and, and suppose you turn to the left, 
the wings on this thing will turn to the left. If the nose is pointing too far down, it'll show that nose will go into the brown. It'll show it dipping down. If you turn or if you're level and you start to pull up, it'll show you if you're, if you're facing up. And it helps you to, to know the angle of attack. You ever been outside on a real hazy day and you look out and, and the, uh, uh, if, you're, if it's like uh, Oh, middle of July, it's real hazy. You look at it, it's almost like fog, but you can see the trees and you can see the, in the distance, but then it kind of fizzles out and you can't really see the horizon. The horizon is how you measure whether or not you're level or not. It's, you really need it when you're up in the air because you don't have any other way of knowing if you're up too high or down too low. You have to look outside. Sometimes, though, it gets fuzzy. This thing helps you by creating an artificial horizon so you know when you're up or down and you know how how you're facing your how your attitude is all right if you're going to go through life you're going to need to know you're going to have to have an airspeed indicator you're going to have to know how fast you're going you're going to need an attitude indicator to know how you're how you're acting to get there then there's one right here it says what it is on there it says it's an altimeter what in the world is an altimeter What would you guess an altimeter is? Uh, how, how much owl there is? Oh, like <clears throat> this is airspeed. This is attitude. This is altitude. All right. All right. Altitude is is measuring what? Tell me. Tell me what altitude is. How high you are. Okay. How high you are. All right. Well, this is one for the co-pilot and one for the pilot. Well, if the pilot passes out, he takes over. <laughs> well, because this is the pilot. So this is the instructor would sit over here, too. This is my instructor sat here, and then I would sit here, and he, this is, he trained me. And he had flown so much that he could look over there. You know, the cockpit's only that wide, so it's not like he was far away from them. <laughs> so they just put them all over there because this is where the pilot normally sits, and so he's got all the stuff right in front of him. This is an altimeter. Now, this tells you how high you are. It's got like a minute. It's got three hands on it. One of them measures feet in, in, uh, in hundreds or in tens, I'm sorry. And so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 feet. And then this other hand here, this, this white skinny one, it, it, no, it measures uh, in, um, no, no, it measures in feet, but it measures in not tens, but hundreds of feet. So as soon as this thing goes to, as soon as the really little one that you, that's hard to see, as soon as it goes around once, this one will go to one. And now you know you're at 100 feet. And then the little one goes around, and then it goes to 200. So then as soon as this one goes around all the way, and it goes 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, then this little hand, this other, this fatter hand right here, it goes to the one. And it measures altitude in thousands of feet. So you have to learn how to kind of, it's almost like telling time, but not. But you have to learn how to look and you see if the big hand's pointed at five, and the little hand's pointed at seven, then you know you're at 5,700 feet. All right, and that's, you have to, you, you read that and it tells you how high you are off the ground. That's important because although when you're up in the air, it really doesn't matter how high you are. It does matter how low you are, though. That's an old pilot saying. They say it doesn't matter how high you are, but it does matter how low you are because eventually you get so low that you crash, okay? You can. Now, there's, there's other rules about that, but when it, uh, when it, if you boil everything away, it's just important. It's important to know how close you are to the ground because you don't want to get too close uh, because that's not safe. These things right here, you got one, two, three things right here. These are navigators, all right? And they've all got names. These are, these are called a VOR instrument. Uh, there's, uh, and there's a couple other names for them, ADF. There are abbreviations for them. These are all navigators. And these all tell you where to point, where to, where, where to turn so that you know where to go. But right here, is the most important one of all because this one is not a mechanical thing at all it's just a magnet floating in water what do you think this is a compass would you believe that a magnet floating in water is is one of the most important instruments in there because this will tell you where you're pointed these will tell you where you need to point okay you know there's a difference between how you live your life and how you should live your life and sometimes sometimes they match but it's easy to get off isn't it 
And so sometimes we, we live our life and we're pointing. We know, we say, oh, I know exactly where I'm going, how fast I'm going, what my attitude is, and how high I am. Okay, where should you be going? It's one thing to know where you're at right now, but it's another thing to know where you need to go. These tell you where you need to go. This one tells you where you're really at. Okay, and there's a, there's a, uh, another compass down here. Is, uh, there's always a backup. So there's a backup compass right here, and that helps you too. This little guy right here, the, the, the round thing behind the yoke here, do you see that one? This is a, this one. It's called a turn coordinator, all right? And that's a really neat one. Um, a turn coordinator. It's really cool because once you learn how to use this, you don't ever have to use it again. And by that, I mean this helps you to train. It helps to, you train your eyes. When you're flying, you know, you can, you can bank an airplane like this, and, and if, if your nose isn't right, and if your tail's not right, you can turn like this, and it just feels wrong. They say fly by the seat of your pants, and literally, you'll feel uncomfortable. It's, it's hard to explain, but you'll be sitting in that seat, and you'll, you'll turn those wings, and if it's, if it's not right back here, and if it's not right up here, you're like, uh. And after you learn how, to, and this thing will tell you if it's wrong, all right? <laughs> and, and so then you look at that, and you say, oh, what do I need to do to fix it? And they saw, there's a little b ball in there, and that ball rolls from side to side, and they always tell us, step on the ball. And so whenever that ball, if it rolls to the left, you step on the pedal to the left, and the ball will roll back to the middle. And if it rolls too far, then you step on the right one, and you, you keep that ball centered. And it's, it does sound simple. And once you learn how to use it, you don't really ever have to use it again. You, you, you begin to feel how it's supposed to be, but it's always there to reassure. You know, we... Do you, we get, encourage you guys to memorize Bible verses? You guys memorize verses in your class? It's good to memorize Bible verses, but you can't just, sometimes you can't just go off of memory. You gotta, you gotta have the Bible. You gotta have, you gotta go back to the Bible. But when you memorize, it's almost like training to use this turn coordinator because it's gonna help you to know how to turn to the Lord. After you've been living the uh, as a Christian, after you've been following Christ for a while, you're going to know what it feels like when stuff's not lined up. Right? Uh, maybe you've felt that. Maybe you haven't felt that yet. We're trying to teach you Bible verses and memorize so that you'll have the instrument. But eventually, you're going to know when you're not doing right. It's just going to, you're just going to say, you know what? This doesn't feel right. And nobody's going to have to tell you. You're just going to know. And that's what this is. This is an instrument that the more you use it, the less you the, the, the less you have to use it. Now, that's not the Bible. But it is something to say about, you know, we tell you what to do. As your parents, I tell you what to do. But because you listened and because you were trained, you're going to know when it's not right, and you're going to know when you need to straighten out your, your attitude and turn back to the Lord. Okay? Here we go. I'm running out of ink on this one. Uh... That's the tachometer. That's not important. Here we go. This is a good one. This is a vertical, vertical speed. All right. Vertical speed indicator. There's a lot of them that are called indicators. All right. A VSI. Ver I'm not going to write out vertical speed indicator. <clears throat> and you know, when you're, when you're flying, there's, it's just like this. When you want to come, come down, you can come down like this, but probably that's not how you want to land, right? So when you're coming down, you want to come more like this and make it nice and easy. And so when you hit the ground, it's not like that, okay? Because that's what breaks stuff and hurts people, okay? So when you're coming down, the vertical speed indicator says, it tells you, slow it down, all right? Pull, pull it up, or maybe it tells you, push it down. I've been, I've been trying to land before, and I thought I had everything right, and I looked at the vertical speed indicator, and it says, you're climbing, now, if I'm trying to land, I don't want to go up. I've also been taking off before, and as we're going up into the air, I, you, you got a lot of different forces, and taking off is probably the most stressful time, and so you're watching a lot of things. And I looked at this one. I was looking at everything else, and I looked at this one, and it said, you're not climbing. And the most important thing to do when you're taking off is to take off. You don't want to stay close to the ground. Remember, it doesn't matter how high you are, but it does matter how low you are. And this thing tells you, hey, you're making good progress, or you're not doing what you thought you were doing. 
And this is an instrument we need in our lives because many times we get everything lined up and we think we're doing it all right. I want to see, are we getting higher or are we still sinking? All right. You need to, this is an indicator of something that we need to show us just, just how much progress. And you know what progress is? Progress is you come to Patch Club getting, getting uh, merits, getting badges for, for faithfulness. Getting, getting marked for uh, memorizing your verse and bringing your devotions and, and doing your devotions every day. All right? Does that make sense? It's, it's measurements. You need measurements in your life to tell you how much progress you're making. Miss Ashley's like, Brother Lewis, you have taught the longest junior church ever. What is the point? Are you guys wanting to know what the point is? All these instruments. Now, there's all kinds of interesting stuff here. These are, these are your radios uh, indicator, but these are radios for these. Each one of these has a radio attached to it. This is a GPS right here. I never got to use a GPS. I'm kind of jealous. It's a GPS right there. These are your flaps. This is important here because this helps slow you down when you land. This is a fuse panel, master switch for your avionics. And if you accidentally hit that with your knee while you're flying, it's scary. All right, so you don't ever want to do that. There's your ignition key. Now, in order to become a pilot, you have to ride with an examiner, like taking a driving test. And as you're riding with your examiner, he tells you what to do, what maneuvers to perform, and how to perform them. And so at some point during that examination, he reaches over to the throttle, pulls the throttle, and says, you have just lost power. What do you do? He says, you've just lost power. What do you do? And so we may be in the middle of doing something, and I've got to stop everything and get set up for this is an emergency. All right? And let's, let's just face it, guys. There's lots of things in life we do that are, that are a lot of fun, that teach us a lot, that tell us a lot. But when it's an emergency, everything changes. Because there's only one thing that's important, and that is survive this emergency. Everything, I mean, all the other instruments are great, but half of them now don't even work. <laughs> My compass is still working, thank goodness, but everything else may or may not work. The engine may not be working. My flaps may not be working. I mean, nothing may be working. There is, in every airplane, no matter how big or how small, they have, uh, they have a radio in them. Every airplane has to have a radio. And these, some of these radios go with instruments, but one of these radios, this one right here, goes to a little tiny button. You see a little red button on there? That little red button, that's not, that's not like Men in Black. Don't push the little red button, all right? That's, that's not like the, the machine gun that's hidden under your thing, all right? It's not an explosion button. That is what you push, and you will call somebody. In my case, when I was a, this is your call sign, we would say November 388 Echo Sierra, uh, we're having a May Day. May Day, May Day, May Day. November 388 Echo Sierra. We're having a May Day. All right? And that's, I would call that out. That is actually the first thing that I would do if something bad should happen. All these other things are great, but when it comes down to it, I would call out. Now, you, if you lose power, there's this other thing. And then you realize I don't have a radio. So you reach behind your seat. And you pull out something that looks like this. And you hardly ever use it. In fact, you never want to use it. But it's there. And you check it. And you make sure it's there. And this is a backup radio. And you would turn this thing on and you would call just like you were calling there. And this little guy could just save your life. Yes, sir? Well, number one, number one, the way they save you is... Communicating with somebody, that's a real good question. That's the whole point. Being able to talk to somebody when you're in an emergency is the most important thing because, number one, you don't have all these things here stop working. All right? You only have what you can see and guess. You have your compass that tells you where you're, where you're headed, but maybe, you're, maybe you don't know where you want to go anymore. All these things that were helping you, they're gone. But if you can talk to somebody, you say... You give them your, you identify yourself. And spiritually, here's what we do. Here's how we identify ourselves. We say, Lord, it's me again. <laughs> Lord, help. Lord, save me. Lord, uh, I'm having a bad, I'm having a rough day today. I'm having an emergency. You identify yourself. And as soon as you identify yourself, 
a, ra a controller from any controller from anywhere, uh, I say from anywhere, anywhere that can pick you up, they monitor all the time this radio station. As soon as they hear the word Mayday, every, everybody else goes to second place. The person that yells Mayday is, is first place. They turn off everybody. They will turn off an airliner with 100 people on it. They will turn off Air Force One. I mean, they will turn off the military. They turn off everybody. If they hear a Mayday, everybody else turns off. Guys, when, uh, when we're talking about in life, when you have an emergency, when you go to God for help, he's not, he doesn't put you on a list of other people that need help. When he hears a mayday in your life, you become number one. He's listening to you and only you. You need to know that. The Lord Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He wasn't talking to a bunch of people. He was talking to you, just you. Talking to somebody is the most important thing because when everything else fails, you identify they're listening. Number two, they know where you are even when you don't. Because a radio has a unique thing, even if radar can't reach you, a radio has a unique thing called a, a transponder code. And what they do with a transponder, it's almost like a whale. You know how whales tell, and bats, you know how bats tell uh, how, how they fly in the dark? They send out a signal and it bounces off of stuff and it bounces back. So a radio has a transponder, and what they do is if you call Mayday, you don't know where you're at. They send out a signal, and it bounces off of your airplane, and it bounces back to them. It's almost like radar, but it's not. It's called a transponder, and they bounce it back, and they know exactly where you are, even if you don't. There have been many pilots that have, because they got in touch, uh, they, they used their radio, they got caught in a cloud. Or they got caught in a storm. And, and not only could they not, these were no good, they couldn't even see out their window. But that controller could talk to them and he say, okay, you're, you're, you're losing altitude, pull up. Okay, you need to turn left, keep a, heading of, of, keep a heading of west or keep a heading of north or whatever heading you need to have. Okay, you need to slow down. And they can walk them step by step. In fact, uh, 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 a pilot that I knew, he told me about how uh, uh, an aircraft controller guided him down and the fog was so thick. He said when, when he got down, the, the controller said, okay, can you see the runway? And he said, no. And so he kept talking him through it. And he said, okay, now can you see the runway? He said, no, I can't. So he kept talking him through it and he kept guiding him little by little. And he said it was literally like 50 feet in front of him before he could finally see it. But that, that controller guided him until he was just, and 50 feet in an airplane is not very much, he guided him just until his wheels just about had already touched the ground. But because he listened and he, and he listened to what he, every instruction, if he said pull up, boy, he pulled up. He didn't wait and he didn't argue. If he said turn, he turned. He didn't argue. And he got him down to where he was just right there. And the fog was so thick that even though he couldn't do it himself, by listening, he survived. By listening, he lived. Guys, talking, keeping communication with God is the most important thing you can ever do. Because you're not going to know where you're at sometime in your life. You're not going to be able to find your way out. And, and there's going to be so many things that fail you, so many things that leave you. But if you can just keep talking to God, He will get you all the way home and He'll get you there safe. But you have to listen. And when the controller says, turn, you need to turn. When he says pull up, you need to pull up. You can't argue with him. You can't wait. You can't hesitate. Because you don't get, you don't get guided home by doing it your way. Not in an emergency. Here's the other thing. The last reason. You ask the good question, why is talking to people most important? Because they can, they can see you when they can't see you. Talking to somebody gives you a, uh, they know where you're at even when you don't know where you're at. And then there's the worst case scenario. You can't make it back. You've run out of fuel. That's one reason you call a mayday. <laughs> you know, maybe a bird hit your wing and it started to leak. Maybe, you, maybe your gauge quit working or your engine just stopped and you can't make it. You're just going to crash. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to hurt. You're going to make it the best you can. But when you crash, somebody knows where you are. Help is already on the way. Those, mayday, those air traffic controllers, when they hear the mayday and, and you say, hey, I don't know where I'm at. I can't make it where I need to go. I'm just going to crash. They will say this. They will say, help is already on the way. 
Help is already on the way. A big airliner came, came in one time and he had lost an engine and, and the engine was smoking. It was, it was on fire and uh, he was coming, coming in. This is actually something that happened recently. You can get on YouTube and watch this video. Guy was coming down and, and you know, he knew he was coming in. He had lost an engine. It was going to be rough and it was going to be ugly, but he made it to a runway. And when he touched down on the runway, there was, there was these giant red trucks that pulled up and they were, going, they were going as fast as they could go. And they pulled out on the runway right beside him as he was going down the runway. And as he slowed down and stopped, they were already there. They had been prepared before he ever made it. Help is already on the way. You guys ready? Let me, let me show you this. Let me show you a verse here and then we'll be done. Oh, a, there's some good verses in here. Come to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. This is a good verse. This is a really good verse. Jeremiah 33. There's, a, there's so many good verses in the Bible. We're going to pick, we're going to pick this one. It stands out to me because we read it recently. I read it recently. Jeremiah chapter 33. Guys, all flying is complicated. Life is complicated. There's lots of things to remember, lots of things to do, and you need to be good at all of them. But when an emergency happens and the power goes out, the one thing you need to remember. Yeah, Mayday. That's right. Don't ever, don't ever stop communicating with God. Don't ever let that be the last thing you do. That should be the very first thing you do because he's listening. He'll never leave you alone. He knows where you're at. And if everything should completely fall apart, he'll say these words to you. Help is already on the way. Jeremiah chapter 33. You ready? You need to mark this in your Bible. Verse 3. You see it? He says this. Call unto me. Lord, it's John again. Lord, it's Lewis again. Call unto me, what does he say? And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me and I will answer thee. When everybody else won't, I will. You'll be number one in my book. I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things. He said, I will do things for you that you can't do for yourself. Guys, you've never lived through life before. You don't, want to make, you don't want to crash it. I can't teach you any more than what I know, but God knows. He's, he's lived from forever to forever. He knows what your life is from the beginning to end, and He can guide you through it. Let Him be the controller of your life. Would you guys do that? Would you let Him be the controller of your life? Maybe one of these days we'll get to fly this way. But if you follow Jesus Christ, for sure, one of these days, he said, just like I left, you'll leave. Don't let your life be a crash landing when the Lord finds you, all right? Don't, don't let him find you crashed and say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you call for help? Okay, don't be that guy. Be the guy that says, mayday. Be the guy that yells the loudest, okay? When you need God's help, don't be the quiet guy. All right? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this, this day. Lord, thank you for uh, being able to have junior church. Thank you, Lord, for my kids, for Jamarcus, and for teenagers, and for my wife, and for the nursery uh, workers. Lord, thank you for everyone that came to church today. Lord, I pray that uh, what we learned today, God, would, would uh, make a difference, Lord, that would bless, the, uh, bless our life, Lord, and, and uh, help us to remember the most important thing we have is that we can talk to you. I pray that you'd help us to do that, Lord. Guide us through rough times in our life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to let you be the controller in our life, Lord. Please let me be a good example of that to, to anybody that, that's watching me, anybody that listens to me, Lord. And uh, thank you for everything we've got to do today. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen.